Hello and good morning guys and welcome back to the third and final part of my City Skylines 2 Early Access series, the city of Lakeland. Today we will be completing the city, yes you heard that right, we will be basically completing this whole city. I'm not saying we're gonna unlock and fill out all the tiles, but we are going to give the city all the features, services and other stuff you would expect from a large city like this. If you're new here and you're liking what you're seeing, I would really appreciate if you considered giving this video a thumbs up and maybe even subscribing if you haven't already. So the first part of this build will be to build a harbor or a port. And to do that I need to unlock the tiles all the way to the map edge because we create, we need to create a uh, ship path. This is something you couldn't do in City Skylines 1. You were depending on the map maker uh, having the forethought of adding ship paths directly onto the map. But now you can add them yourself to the outside connection. The only downside is you have to unlock the tiles. So we have like this straight line of tiles unlocking to the map edge. I'm flattening this large area here. I'm thinking this is going to be like a the port for the entire area or the city or region. So there's both going to be a cruise port and a commercial container port basically in this in this part. So I'm flattening a large area around this port. I'd imagine there would be a lot of industries and offices and stuff like that also. So that's why we need the large flat area. We don't really need it. We could just do the port, to be honest. I realize I need one more tile to be able to fit in the, the container port uh, fully. It's a Container port is a massive asset. It has built in all those containers, the container yard, I guess, which is really really nice. It's like one of the most aesthetic, nice looking assets to look at, I think. And here I'm placing the cruise port or the, the passenger port. These are the only two ports we have right now. And now I'm creating the sh those ship paths I was talking about. The ship paths are kind of like the networks. They are very, very flexible in how you can place them and how you can connect them. You can see they kind of like just snap and glue together with existing networks and paths, which is very nice. They are not as dependent on like having the nodes connect perfectly as they had as we were in city skylines one basically there's going to be a lot of cuts i'm going to cut out more or less the repetitive boring stuff of like making too many roads and, and grids and stuff like that so don't expect to see the entire process of building the city i had to cut out a lot again um, <laughs> as in the second part the total amount of footage I think is something like six hours, but I did go ahead and build a little bit like just detailing out the edges after like in addition to those six hours. So just keep that in mind. This is also going to be a I'm not sure if it's going to be one hour, but near one hour episode. So that really lets me show a lot more than I could have in the first two parts. I'm also very conscious about my voice not being the best today when I'm recording this. This is the day before the video goes live, by the way. So I will probably take breaks and let you listen to a little bit of the in-game soundtrack from time to time. So if I go silent suddenly, don't worry, I'll probably be back.
Here you can see me playing around with some of the unique uh, industry buildings, or signature buildings rather. I do end up placing some of these in, in this industrial area, but uh, for now I'm just checking which ones fit and which ones don't. Another difference from City Skylines 1 is that you have to set up the ship lines manually by connecting them from the ports to the map edge. For some reason I struggled with the pathfinding for one of them, but there are several different sizes of ship paths or sea lanes, and I do believe the wider ones, the bigger ones, have a bigger capacity for uh, more ships transiting them, basically. And now we're moving on to the next build, which is the airport. I'm unlocking a few tiles here, um, carefully sort of trying to figure out how many tiles I need and which tiles I need, not trying to waste them unnecessarily. Because we have a pretty interesting airport plan in mind here. City Skylines 2 comes with two types of airport. There's the regular airport, I don't think it has a specific designation if it's a regional airport or something like that, just the airport. And a international airport. The international airport has two runways, but it also requires a lot more progression points to unlock and, and place it. So I'm thinking about doing a design here that uses basically two of the normal runways, or the two of the normal airports that have one runway each, and having them rotated 180 degrees. So it looks like you have a bigger airport that's connected, even though they're actually not connected, and they're two separate airports. Just to make sure that I assign the proper credits, this is not my invention or design, this is a design by creator Boldly Building. You should go check them out, they have some really great City Skylines 1 assets on the workshop. Another really interesting thing about these two builds starting off is that I plan to connect them via a metro. So you can see me placing a metro depot here, so I'm unlocking the metro stations and the metro tracks. And uh, we're gonna start doing that. I'm going to use the overground metro station at the airport in between the two terminals. There is no elevated metro station yet. There is only an underground metro station with a very small footprint and a ground level metro station. I would have very much preferred if there were more options from scratch when it comes to different metro stations like elevated and sunken and maybe even with more tracks. But for now, this is what we got. Remember that City Skylines 1 only had underground metro until the Sunset Harbor DLC. Before then, metro was exclusively underground. The metro line will terminate at the harbor and the airport and go through the center of downtown, connect up suburbs, the main train station and the large industrial area. Every airport needs a lot of parking, so now I'm going through and placing a bunch of parking lots. Using both the parking garage and the surface parking lots that we have unlocked so far. It is about this time I realized I need some more space to be able to do the symmetrical airport that I wanted. So I move the whole airport building, the second airport, a bit off and replace the road with this uh, double unit wide, double width road. And then you can actually upgrade it back to the smaller road again. That's a, a neat way to offset roads in, in City Skylines 2 that you couldn't really do in City Skylines 1. That's because of how the lanes are basically one geometry you can snap after. Uh, whereas in City Skylines 1 you could only snap based on the networks themselves.
So with the airport mainly done, we're moving on to uh, creating the road connection in here. And not just the road connection, also the metro connection. So I'm deleting this interchange and the highway segment because we're going to make a new highway segment here where the metro runs in the median of the highway. First thing here I'm doing is replacing the train track or just making a bridge on the existing train track so that we can tunnel underneath it or go underneath it I suppose. The reason why we're going underneath here is because we're pretty close to the runways so if we were to do like bridges that would be I don't want to say an aviation hazard but it's probably not great either to uh, to go up so we're going down we're digging into the soil instead. I'm using the slope tool to slope the, the terrain between two endpoints. This is a tool that I learned relatively recently in City Skylines 1 how to use and it is so powerful and I would say it's one of the most important tools uh, for building roads in City Skylines 2. It's extremely helpful. If you don't know how to use it, I would recommend like just testing it and seeing what it does and, and trying to figure it out. The main idea of this is that you right click with your mouse with, with the tool selected at some point and then you drag with the left mouse button selected from another point towards or from that point and it's going to adjust the, the terrain uh, relative to the first point you clicked. Here I want to create a station underneath the highway or in between the highway at the same time. This would have been a lot easier if we had like an elevated station to use, but I'm trying going to try to make a highway median sort of station uh, using the ground level station anyway. Just placing it down and connecting the tracks. I find it a lot easier to do the tracks before and then add the highways afterwards. We're also going to connect up the depot for the first time. As far as I can tell, the single tracks for the metro are one way, whereas the single tracks for the train, the train line, the heavy rail, they are actually, there's two way versions of those tracks as well. I don't know if that's a conscious decision or or anything, but it really doesn't matter so much for me. I'm going to use the single track to connect the depot's other spurs here. Upgrading networks in City Skylines 2 is a little bit different from upgrading networks in City Skylines 1. You have to drag along the network for the upgrade to, uh, to be understood, but it's definitely still a feature, it's just a little bit different. And here you can see me actually placing a bridge of highway over that metro station and connecting it up. This is a cool new feature. There is no collision that sort of prevents you from actually building a bridge over a building. As long as it clears the building's footprint, you can do some pretty in... I don't want to say insane, but you can do some pretty weird stuff like this. I'm also disabling the snapping to upgrade this road to a three-lane highway instead of a two-lane highway. Disabling snapping lets you upgrade and wiggle them with basically pixel level accuracy. So that's really useful for a lot of different things.
now with everything back connected, it's time to start making a large interchange here. This is going to be the, the first and only real system interchange in this map, I believe. It used to be a, a T interchange or a T directional T uh, junction, T stack maybe, but it's going to turn into more like a clover stack because when I make interchanges, it has to have at least one clover for some reason. Uh, I think that's the case for all interchanges on this map, except the one diverging diamond, which is an outlier. So the way I like to do it is I like to smooth the terrain, or like slope the terrain, to make it easier to make the ramps gradually go down or go between the two different levels. Sometimes I drag them out in the wrong direction and then upgrade them back to fix the direction. I'm also playing around and widening the highway before the interchange to make the split and I guess also the merge parts behave a bit more realistic. This is where City Skylines 2 really shines by the way. Making highway infrastructure like this, there is just no equivalent in Vanilla City Skylines 1. You have to use a lot of mods and a lot of more of your patience just to get anything looking similar to this in City Skylines 1. While I'm editing this interchange, I want to take a moment to thank Paradox Interactive and Colossal Order for giving me the opportunity to play this game before it's launched. It is a huge privilege and I'm very grateful for it. To be fully transparent with you, I got this game for free. I did not have to pay for it. This might affect how I feel about it, so please keep that in mind. This is not a paid promotion in any other way and I'm making these videos entirely out of my own volition. Also on the topic of interchanges, I like to make interchanges for City Skylines. I also like to make them for City Skylines 2, I've, I've learned. I think more people will enjoy it in City Skylines 2, to be honest. It's, a, it's just more powerful and it looks better by default. I have this plan that I want to make maybe a few videos or some content of different types of interchanges for City Skylines 2. I'd love to sort of try a few different concepts what is possible in the new game, contra what was possible in the old game and stuff like that. Maybe having something like a little bit of an interchange world tour or something like that. <laughs> I think that could be a fun idea. Let me know if you would like to see kind of recreation videos for City Skylines 2 when it comes to interchanges, or if, if you'd prefer to see like proper city builds, kind of like this has been. I'm also interested to hear if you have any examples of real life interchanges you want me to try to make. That would definitely be a lot of fun for me, but I think also it could make for pretty fun videos, so 
yeah, let me know what you think about my silly ideas. I'm using a combination of the terraforming tools and adjusting the step height in the road building tools to get these ramps to work out just the way I want them. It can be a little bit finicky sometimes, it wouldn't be a City Skylines game if it wasn't though. As a final touch of this interchange, I'm terraforming it to restore the terrain around it a little bit. We've done a lot of temporary edits to the terrain, and now we're just bringing it back to sort of how it was before. The next part is setting up the plane lines. This works the exact same way as we did with the ship lines, and also if you remember from the second episode of the series, uh, the rail lines. We connect the terminals with an outside connection, an outside plane connection, and planes will start using this transiting back and forth between the airport and the outside connection. The next part of this video will be about the completion of the metro line. I said that the metro would go between the port and the airport, and here is our port station, which is going to be one of the terminal stations on this line. Most of the stations, especially those in downtown or near downtown in the more densely populated areas, will be underground stations. It's just a lot easier to do it that way and uh, I think it, it kind of works. But I really like to have the metro line pop up above the ground near the terminal stations. This is something you see quite a lot in real life, I want to say. Uh, especially on the Stockholm metro, but I think also on the London tube or underground and to be honest plenty of other metro systems worldwide you see the same phenomenon For the main train station, we actually have an upgrade that adds a subway interface to the main train station. So we're going to use that, integrating it nicely into the train station and probably letting people transfer a lot easier than having to walk across the street. Viewer question time. Should we call it the Lakeland Metro, Subway or Underground? And while I'm at it, I might as well ask another question. Would you guys want to see this city continued in video format or maybe in streams or something like that? As I said, the city gets completed pretty much. It gets a completed state, but there's plenty of more tiles to unlock. In the end, we unlock 127 by my count tiles on this map out of a total of 441, so we still have plenty of room on this map to make it bigger. It becomes a question, of course, if my computer can handle a much bigger city, but uh, let me know what you think. Would you like to see this expanded or like continue to work on uh, for a bit and uh, I'll see what I can do about it. 
I did notice one thing when connecting the metro lines, especially the ones underground. It makes it a lot easier if you know the default depth, and I think the default depth is minus 20 meters. I could be wrong, but that makes the snapping to the station ends a lot easier, and it's something I discovered while doing this. This is the first metro lines I'm actually building in the game at all, so... And here we're creating the end of a line where the tunnel transitions into a ground segment. I'm using the slope tool to, uh, to make the tunnel entrance a bit more smooth. It's basically the exact same as I did in episode 2 for the train lines and also uh, I do this a lot in City Skylines 1 so I'm feeling like there's a lot of tricks that I'm so grateful for City Skylines 1 that City Skylines 1 taught me that I can still use in this game. It's definitely carrying on with a lot of the features and a lot of the skills you, you've acquired from that game. Not just when it comes to design, but also like in some cases the technical stuff, how to solve certain problems. So I'm really happy about that. It could have been a lot worse. It could have been a completely different game where everything was done in, in different ways. And, and here is probably one of the most struggling, the biggest struggles for me on this uh, metro line. It's creating the transition between tunnel and bridge, basically. I had to cut out quite a few, uh, quite a few segments of me just scratching my head here, but eventually I got it to work. The bridge is basically not a, a flat bridge, it's a sloped bridge. It needs to be sloped in order to, uh, to create a smooth transition between the tunnel entrance and the metro station on the other side, and there's a bridge there also. A lot of the times City Skylines 2 doesn't spawn enough pillars, in my opinion, and uh, then you might want to add more. Sometimes you can add more by just clicking with the straight road sele selection onto a road to create another pillar, but sometimes it helps upgrading a segment of road with, for example, tram tracks, and then creating a node in the middle of it by connecting another road, and then removing the tram tracks from one of the parts, and then removing the road. The transition between tram and non-tram road forces there to be a node there, and then if you remove a tram altogether, it still stays uh, the pillar that is. So. so for this next part, I noticed that my citizens are quite unhappy with a few things, especially crime rate and healthcare coverage. So I decided to unlock the large police headquarters and the disease control center, which is a hospital building and also the server farm, because they all, were also complaining about internet access. The next part is me placing them. The server farm I just placed in that industrial area that is yet to grow in. But the police station I think fits better in the actual city itself, so I have to reconfigure this block here uh, just so we can get it in. And you can see I'm moving those roads using snapping turned off upgrading, but still not quite enough, so I actually end up deleting them and just redragging re that road. You can actually turn off snapping when placing buildings as well, like turn off the road snapping, so you can place them freely anywhere. This is a very useful feature that uh, the previous game never had. One grievance I have with some of these service buildings are that they are very big. They're maybe a little bit too big for uh, all purposes. I would have preferred maybe a bit more variation with a few more smaller alternatives, but you know what, we can, we can probably expect to see that kind of stuff eventually get, getting added. For now, this is fine. And we also have the smaller police station anyways. Here I am placing the disease control building, which is basically just a large hospital. It acts like a hospital. And we're also hitching the big city milestone while placing it. When placing this building, we get a lot of XP, which levels up our progression. I think this building is probably one of the most interesting looking and maybe beautiful buildings that I've seen so far in the game. Like I really like the almost ear shape it has, like a semicircle with a flat sort of main building. It just looks really interesting. I really like the shape of this building. I really like how it complements the, the rest of the city. So, And I'm also happy about that spot. A 
now I'm just remembering I never actually created a metro line, so I'm connecting up the metro stations. I, I usually do it the same way as I do it in City Skylines 1. I connect the two ends and then go through the line and just click on the line and, and drag uh, to add stops along it. I don't know why, I feel like it's a little bit easier. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to, to sort of have the selection snap to the proper station. The, the goal is to have the thing snap to the icon, the red icon in this case. So this next part is basically me upzoning and, uh, and rezoning large parts of the city, especially the downtown area. We're getting in some of our first high density offices and uh, just changing the zoning in general. I think this is a very important part of building in City Skylines 2 that I kind of learned from playing Vanilla City Skylines 1, because if you just zone a block of one certain type it will very very often almost always I would say like look very monotonous and uninteresting so if you want to have an area with like high effort high detail like you kind of need to go in and and switch out the zoning on a per building basic basis and that's what I'm doing right now it can be in some cases it's down zoning from high density to medium density or like even to row houses in some cases it's up zoning from a row house to an office skyscraper and just like all over and you can see it's also spreading out to the lower and medium density neighborhoods next to downtown. There's also a few unique buildings I had placed here before without any regard to where their final position would be and you can see I'm relocating them to more permanent locations as they come in the way for the rezoning efforts. now see that the cranes start to tower over the, the surroundings from all the new zoning that's popping up. I want to talk a little bit about the row houses. I love the row houses in this game. Both the European and North American set of row houses are great. But they kind of don't always work perfectly when you have a perfect grid. What I mean with that is I would want to, especially in these dense areas of downtown, I would want the row houses to always face a road and like create the illusion of a sort of inner courtyard. But sometimes they spawn so that they have the courtyard just along a road instead. And I found that fixing that often entails just rezoning the corner with a medium density building or, or doing some other trickery. But in many cases, I'm just going in and adding a corner building, like a corner shop or something like that on the corner that forces the zoning to recalculate. I'm also using more and more of the mixed-use buildings, the mixed-use commercial and residential buildings, which is a new for City Skylines 2. Buildings that have both a commercial and residential function at the same time. They both have shops and people living in them at the same time. I haven't quite figured out the best use case for them yet, but I like to use them as a complement when it comes to like the assets and the models because they usually have a unique model from the mid-rise pure commercial and the pure residential buildings. So that's nice. Because there are now a total of five different types underneath the, the residential zoning tab, we actually get quite a lot of variation by default just mixing between these styles. 
And it also really hammers in the point that I'm trying to make that you need to be more active maybe with the zoning type in City Skylines 2 compared to City Skylines 1. In City Skylines 1 you had a lot of different assets, but you didn't have all that many different zoning types. Which means you could zone one type and you would get by default a larger variation of, of stuff spawning. In City Skylines 2 you have maybe less assets, but you have more different types of assets. So you need to be a little bit more active with that if you want to create better variety. Hopefully with future updates, content packs and mods and assets, we'll be able to, uh, to get a much larger variation using a single zoning type. But until then, this is pretty much the best way. And here we actually had the city's water supply as these groundwater pumping stations in the middle of the downtown. So I decide, you know what, we should move these guys. And there's another one near the industrial area by the train station. We should move these to better locations if we can find any. Now that we've unlocked a lot more tiles. So I find two pretty good, decent locations out in the suburbs instead that make a lot more sense for them. With the groundwater pumping, you need to make sure that it doesn't try to pump water out of a polluted aquifer. I was a little bit concerned that maybe we were getting polluted water from the pumping station near the industrial area. So it was a really good thing we moved that, regardless if it needed to move for the downtown or not. The game has three types of zoning tools. The Bucket Fill and the Marquee Select make a return from City Skylines 1, but the Brush has been replaced with a single tile zoning tool. I don't think the single tile zoning tool is very useful to be honest, especially considering there are very few or even none 1x1 one one or 2x1 large buildings that can grow from these tiles. So, I'm not sure why it's needed. I would have preferred to have a brush that you can adjust and make larger and smaller uh, to do zoning instead, but that's a minor pet peeve I have when it comes to the zoning tool. Since I recorded this build, there's been an update to the game and this update has some really cool features, especially for the visuals. It's a massive update. It's an update that includes fall trees and also snow covering buildings. So it's a pretty huge update, also with large updates to textures and stuff like that. So it just really, really improves the visuals of the game. And since I'm so late at recording this, that means I can actually try to get some of those new and improved visuals into the cinematics. So whatever you do, make sure you don't miss those. Those are going to be spectacular, probably. 
After just doing some quick tree detailing here using the tree brush to fill in this area around the port and the industrial area, I'm going to be starting the next project of a city. Can you guess what it is? If you guessed park, then you are correct. We're going to be converting this island here that kind of already was a park, but we're going to create a more unique, a more special park out of it. It's going to be a park based upon sight lines. And the main sightline will be the sightline along this main avenue and pedestrian road that, that aligns perfectly with the road and the bridge going onto the island from the downtown. I'm also creating a roundabout at the junction between the road and the pedestrian road and using it as a turnoff point for uh, accessing parking lots. So the main feature of this park will be a tourist attraction. Uh, tourist attractions are the, the final unlock under the parks and recreation tab. And they have like a few really unique buildings and plovables. This here, the large statue with the person holding a globe. It kind of looks like a statue of Lenin standing on top of the foundation of the Statue of Liberty statue in New York. So. I find that really a funny sight and kind of ironic. I choose to believe this is Lenin doing a Gandhi pose on the Statue of Liberty Foundation as a sort of mashup of all the history in the world. <laughs> I'm also connecting these paths that already existed here and connected to that bridge to just create the illusion of this being a park with lots of different destinations and things to do, even if there aren't really all that much you can do other than visit the large statue. I think this is a great way of creating detail. And I've talked about it in the past, like sometimes all you really need is a path network for a park to look like a park. Not saying that this is the best park or anything like that, but it's pretty quick work and it looks decent enough. Here I'm deciding the statue is not aligned properly, so I have to realign it. And I struggled with that for probably two minutes or something like that. I, I don't know what I was doing to be honest, but here you can see that toggle um, snap to road turned off being used for good. And it looks really good in the middle of that circular path. Next I'm using the final remaining development points for this level to unlock the firewatch tower and the large fire station. Those might come in handy. The final build included in the build part of this video is going to be an expansion towards the map edge on the side here. This is an extension of the rail line we built in episode 2 that terminates inside of the mountain right now or inside the hill. So creating this extension of a rail line lets us connect to the map edge and extend the rail line out there. But it also lets us create like a village and some more developments out this way. This is more of a proof of concept of how to create like more sort of disconnected rural communities in City Skylands 2. That's how I saw it at this point anyway. I wanted this place to be a separate character or like a, like in its separate kind of area entirely and the hill kind of protects it like that it sort of shields it off from the the sounds and the sights of the city i don't know why it would need to be shielded but the city is pretty okay i guess but just sort of a proof of concept of creating a different environment within the map this is something a lot of people have been talking about like how this game kind of reminds me of a little bit of the sim city 4 
region view and while the SimCity 4 region view is obviously much 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 bigger you can't really compare it like that it definitely has similarities in that the perceived scale is a lot bigger than than it looks or when it feels when you just sort of hear the numbers the maps in this game or the buildable area of the maps in this game is not bigger than the city skylines one the map is technically smaller but somehow i've almost always felt it's much bigger and i can't really explain why it just there's something about the maps and it's probably some very clever tricks going on making that happen but anyway I am dragging out this rail line here, crossing this small little stream, trying to desperately get more pillars in when the game doesn't like me to have more pillars. Also created a small railway station that will be the, I guess the focal point of this small development or a small town. also see I'm doing a lot of terraforming work here to flatten out the terrain. It's not that it really needs to be flattened, but it does make developing a lot easier. I find myself very often flattening the terrain and then changing it back or using the smooth tool to reset it instead. Basically instead of trusting the terrain entirely, which is something I don't really do quite yet. The terrain contour lines, which have been added since the last video also, is really nice. Uh, but they only do so much. I still find myself using the terrain a lot, especially when dragging out and building roads. Here we're adapting that interchange we built all the way back in the first episode, I believe. And we've edited it in the second episode as well. It's the recurring interchange. We're editing it this time around so that we can basically have the road keep going out towards this village as we just created. That means we just have to reconfigure the ramps a little bit and such things. I'm also using these asymmetrical two plus one highway roads. That way you get dedicated left and right turn lanes when you're turning off the highway coming into the T intersection. It's a nice touch, I like to use it in City Skylines 1 also, but because of how the road markings just automatically know exactly what you're thinking, it's just so much better. I also figured these two roads that come very close to each other should be connected via some shortcut. It wouldn't make sense if they didn't connect in some way in real life. Now I'm connecting the rail line from the map edge very sort of quickly and very hurriedly, I guess. Still trying to make sure that we don't go completely bonkers with the train and, and follow it as much as we can. Rail lines typically require a lot gentler curves and slopes than roads and other networks. Depends also a lot if you have high speed rail networks or not, but I'd imagine these were some kind of in between medium speed mainline rail. So they should be pretty gentle, but they can still do some curves and slopes. Now this town here is getting a small just road layout. 
I'm using the alleys much more for these outer areas, the, the one by one road. And I think it looks really good. And also I'm placing that arched truss bridge, which is another one of my favorite assets that I haven't used yet in the city. It's kind of weird. A fitting tribute, like one of the last assets we plop down will be one of the best ones. So this road also connects up to the map edge. It follows a slightly different path and I don't worry nearly as much about the terrain for this road. I worry a little bit about the train, okay. But not as much as I do with the rail line anyway. Because this road is connected via highway roads, we need to connect power and electricity separately. Another good reason to have this uh, unlocked is that we can actually connect the sewage and uh, water pipes to the outside connection and export it for some profit. So that's a little bit of an extra benefit as well we get unlocking the tiles all the way to the map edge like this. Here you can see me trying to get in a covered bridge. Another one of the bridge assets. It seems I went on a kind of a bridge spree towards the end. Desperately trying to show off all the bridges before the video was over. You can see me struggling quite a bit with the terrain and the slopes of approach to the bridge, but eventually, like after a few tries, it usually works out. These areas out here will eventually be covered with small hamlets, villages and farms. The specialized industry is kind of a game changer when it comes to creating rural areas in City Skylines 2. And uh, I kind of regret not showing it more in this series, but it's definitely something we'll revisit later. And as the build portion of this video is nearing the end, I want to thank you all for joining me on this journey. It's been kind of incredible. I feel pretty complete with this. I'm, I don't have to build anything more. We can revisit it and then expand on it, but I think actually a large part of that is City Skylines 2 being quicker to build. It feels like you're building quicker and stuff progresses faster. Not necessarily that it's easier, but it definitely feels like you can get a lot of progression done quicker. total build time for this entire series is, I estimate, something around 15 to 20 hours. So there's still a lot you don't see in the videos. I would estimate that to build this in City Skylines 1, you would have to take at least four or maybe even five times the amount of time. Anyway. Thank you guys so much for joining me and uh, if you liked this video please consider liking and subscribing it really means a lot. I will see you in the next video but before that don't miss the cinematics. You won't regret it I promise.